Jiggly Cake, or Castella Cake is the original name, you could say it looks a lot more awesome than it tastes. It's been a big food fad across East Asia for years. These bakeries make cakes the size of love seats, and then millions of weirdos on the internet like me watch videos where all they do is cut the cake. Because the cake goes wubba 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 back and forth, and it is spellbinding. I've made them myself before, but with this chocolate recipe, I have focused on making it taste as good as it looks. The historical mother recipe for Castella is, I think, four parts egg, then one part each of fat, milk, flour, and sugar by weight. This is the basic ratio that all the recipes I've read seem to orbit around. To convert it to a chocolate cake, people usually seem to add an additional part of chocolate, which itself is about half cocoa powder and half solid chocolate, and then they usually up the sugar a little bit. I played with these ratios until I got a cake that I think is really tasty and super jiggly. Rather than bake a giant one, I'm doing a normal home kitchen size. This is an 8-inch cake pan, 20 centimeters, and then you need a bigger pan that it will nest into. My roasting tray is my biggest pan, and in it goes to the middle of the oven where I will fill it partway with water. Not so much water that the displacement of my cake pan will cause a flood. That's an easy thing to tell for. Time to get all that heating up to 350 Fahrenheit, 180C. I'm using my convection fan. Castella is a sponge cake, and with any kind of sponge cake, you pretty much have to line the pan with parchment paper. I'm just cutting that piece into a square like the pan, and then I will snip a little diagonal into each corner. Each cut is about the same length as the pan is deep. Now all I have to do is smash that in there, and the corners fit pretty well. There are more precise ways to line a square pan with parchment, but that is good enough for me. Now, a batter. A microwave-safe bowl on the scale. This is a rare time that I really think I need the precision of weight measurement. 75 grams of any neutral cooking oil. Then comes about 35 grams of semi-sweet chocolate chips or any solid chocolate you like. Then about 60 grams of milk. I find you got to cut back on the moisture a bit from the mother recipe to account for the moisture of the melted chocolate. And melt this I will in the microwave. You can do it on the stove just really gently for like 45 seconds in there until it's bubbling. I'll take that out and whisk it smooth. In goes about 40 grams of Dutch cocoa. I'm pretty sure they use Dutch at Original Cake Bakery in Taipei, whose recipe I'm basically trying to reverse engineer here. Their batter looks very dark at this stage. It would be lighter if we used natural cocoa. Then cake flour, and I really find bleached cake flour does better for jiggly cake. It holds more moisture and gives you that pudding-like texture. 75 grams of that. I don't think Original Cake does this, but I really found a big splash of vanilla in there improves the flavor a lot. And it's okay if this is kind of unmixable at this stage. The egg yolks are coming. Six large eggs that I'm cracking into a bowl that should seem too big for the job. We're going to whip the whites in here. The yolks all go into the chocolate mixture. I've found that really fresh eggs help you avoid the kind of farty, sulfurous egg aroma that a cake this eggy can have. Problem is fresh eggs are harder to separate. The white really wants to stick to the yolk, which is why I'm separating them in my fingers. You can literally pinch off stubborn bits of white between your fingers. I'll mix the yolks into all of this while it's still warm. If the temperature drops too much, the chocolate might solidify into hard little grains. No worries if you can't get this totally smooth. There's still more moisture coming over here. The whites, along with a tiny pinch of salt and a little bit of cream of tartar, or really any food acid, both chemicals help us to whip these proteins into a foam so pillowy that you would want to dive face first into it like my new mattress from the sponsor of this video, Helix. Let's thank them. Helix is a premium mattress in a box company. It literally came in a box and it's made to fit your body and sleep preferences. You just do what we did. You go to helixsleep.com and take their quiz. Tell them your body dimensions and those of whomever you're sharing your bed with. Tell them how both of you sleep, side, stomach, whatever, and Helix matches you. We got the moonlight. The super soft sheets and pillows and everything are also from Helix. Lauren always wants a firmer bed. I want a squishy one and this met us right in the middle. It's like snug into a giant jiggly cake the way it kind of wraps around you, but it is firm and supportive under there too. Do your back and this channel a favor and go to helixsleep.com slash ragusia. You'll get up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress plus two free pillows. That link is in the description. Thank you, Helix. And did I mention that I weighed out like 130 grams of sugar in a little bowl? Might seem like a lot of sugar, but I really think you need it to balance the chocolate and to give the cake a cotton candy-like texture. 
Once the egg whites are very foamy and leaving trails like that behind the beaters, you can gradually stir in the sugar. A little bit of sugar you can dump in all at once, but with this much, you kind of got to dose it or it might collapse the foam. I've really found this is key to jiggly cake, beating the sugar into the egg whites until you get a very fluffy, stiff meringue. The sugar reinforces the foam. I'm looking for pretty stiff peaks, like that snowy spire right there. Awesome. We're done with the beaters. Now I'm going to do that classical thing they do with souffles and such, where you take a little bit of your foam and beat it mercilessly into your sticky ingredients. You don't worry about preserving the bubbles. You just use this to lighten up the mixture to get it smooth and ready to integrate more gently into the rest of the foam. I'm doing that cut and fold over move with the spatula, trying to integrate this in as few strokes as possible to preserve bubbles. If you work it too much, you'll feel it get less stiff. It'll go all runny and liquid, and then it won't bake as fluffy. You could actually bake it streaky like that. It comes out looking pretty cool, but I'm going to get it totally smooth, and it is ready to pour in the pan. The taller the cake is, the more jiggly it'll be, so I formulated this to fill my 8-inch pan all the way to the brim. If you're using a wider pan, I think you'd want to up your batter quantities accordingly. Nice and smooth, and I'm topping with a few chocolate chips. Sometimes they sink into the batter a little bit, sometimes they don't. Either way, they stay near the top where they provide some much-needed heterogeneity. You could mix them all the way through if you wanted. All done. Just got to drop this gently into the water bath, which will keep the sides of the cake from overheating, and the steam will keep the dome of the cake pliable, allowing everything to expand and balloon with steam. 40 minutes in, and you can see it's still raw in the center from how it sloshes. 10 minutes later, I'll poke it with a skewer. Still very muddy, not done yet. After about an hour total, poke again, and I find that you don't want it to be totally clean. If it is, the cake will be dry and not very jiggly. That's perfect right there. Now, I could try to lift out this pan, but I'd probably get my oven mitts wet and maybe scald myself. Instead, I'll just use the parchment sling and simply lift the cake right out of there. I'll come back for both pans when they've cooled, and there you go. We can peel the paper off. These eggy batters are super sticky. Imagine if it was stuck like this to the pan. And you can't lube the pan. The batter needs to stick to the wall so that it can climb and get super fluffy and jiggly. Cut that up. In the videos from the bakeries in Taiwan and such, I always see them cutting it into big rectangles while it's still steaming hot. I think it's good to eat this warm because it isn't so gelatinous after it cools. That is really tasty, and it's crazy to think that it doesn't have any gelatin or modified cornstarch or anything. It's just the magic of eggs making it so wobbly. And with the chocolate, the flavor is almost as good as the texture. The chocolate easily overwhelms any unpleasant aroma you might get from the eggs. You get the hang of this cake, and you've got a pretty easy and simple recipe that'll make people very happy. Wubba wubba.